As a producer, faith is going to play a vital role in you understanding how your creativity will manifest into this world. Those who are great producers are able to have the items that they visualize come to life. Welcome to the Produce On Purpose podcast. I am your host, Randy Atkins Jr., author, teacher, preacher, speaker, and lifelong learner. Our dad joke for the week. Which days are the strongest? Saturday and Sunday. The rest are weekdays. Here's one more. I used to hate facial hair, but then it grew on me. As you can tell, I now have a beard for those who actually see me or have seen me in pictures. Please share that with somebody that they can laugh and have some fun. Now let's get into this episode. This episode, we are going to talk about exercise faith on purpose. I'm going to start off with the scripture to describe exercising faith on purpose. That scripture is going to be Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. As a producer, faith is going to play a vital role in you understanding how your creativity will manifest into this world. Those who are great producers are able to have the items that they visualize come to life. So what is faith? Faith is a kite being your imagination, but the string that connects that kite to you is faith. Your faith will allow for you to connect to your imagination and your creativity, which then you will be able to activate and exercise on a daily basis. Faith is where it's not only a religious word, faith is being used by everyone, every day, And the question becomes, are you using your faith on purpose, with intention, and also utilizing the gifts that you have? Or are you using your faith in a way that may not help you or provide a particular image of where you're going? We've discussed having a heavenly vision. We've discussed seeking direction in the times of a midnight hour. Now we are going to discuss exercising our faith based on who we are, based on what our creator has made us to be. And so faith being that thing that you cannot see with your physical eye, but you can see with your spiritual eye. And so let's talk about that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It becomes a substance of the things that you hope for in your creator. I want you to think of all of the things we talk about of having a better life. To have a better life means that I can wake up every morning with joy. I can make, wake up every morning with peace and love in my heart. And it can be consistent if I can have faith that that is what I am going to have every day. But you can also put your faith in other things. You can put your faith in those things that don't bring you joy. You can put your faith in other areas of your life that don't bring any joy at all. Just imagine when your mind goes into a place where you are thinking about the things that you cannot do, you are unable to move forward with, that's when you are not using your faith and exercising it on purpose, but it is being exercised every day. The point I want to make is that faith is not something that is elusive. Faith is 
readily available to everyone, no matter who they are, uh, regardless of their religious background, regardless of what they value or think about. The question becomes, what are the results of your faith? The results of your faith could be things that really make your creator excited and happy, or are you choosing to exercise your faith for your desires and what you want out of life that may hurt other people, may not be the best for you, may make you not feel the best in your life. So let's talk about that in a greater way, in a greater context of using and exercising our faith. We all have problems, problems to be solved in our lives, whether they are problems because of illness in my body, physical ailments, uh, maybe physical uh, limitations that I may have. Uh, We may have big problems because of mental anguish or suffering or uh, areas of our lives that we feel we do not have the skills or the knowledge in. You may have also a big problem in your spiritual world. And I want to start off by saying we need to bring in faith our problems to our Creator. In Matthew 17, it is interesting to listen and look at what Jesus says after he comes down from a mountain Figuration. In 1720, Jesus compares a mustard seed, one of the smallest seeds in the world, to our faith. He makes it clear that we shouldn't be distracted by the big issues or the problems that we are facing in our lives that allow us from producing on our own purposes. But what we should focus on is to start off with a small amount of faith. And in this episode, I want you to imagine and think of yourself in some area just getting a small amount of faith. A mustard seed starts off really tiny, but in that seed is a large tree that will produce and have leaves and grow in a lifetime. The same is with you. But we have to start with some small beliefs of faith that will help us. When Jesus came down off that mountain transfiguration in Matthew 17, there was a uh, per, an issue going on where his disciples were trying their best to um, help a person And they were unable to do it. They were trying to drive a demon out of a little boy. And um, they were having no success. When Jesus comes down, he says, oh, you guys have such little faith. He immediately goes into action. And he drives the demon out of the little boy. And we, one of the biggest things is he looks at them and says, you're faithless. Why did he call them faithless? Because they didn't have the ability to do it. And all Jesus is telling them is, here's what you should think about. Because the disciples came back to him and said, well, how did you do that? We weren't able to do it. How were you able to do that? And Jesus responds, and I want you to hear this response that he gives them. He says that, Some of these things only come through fasting and praying. One of the points I want you to get today out of this episode is when we are ready to exercise our faith, we've got to be ready to put into action and exercise fasting and praying in our lives. We've talked about prayer already in previous episodes because praying is important, but I want to focus on fasting. Fasting is an area of our lives where we can begin to remove distractions in particular areas, whether you're going to fast for um, not eating for a while, or maybe you're going to fast from social media. There are many ways to fast, 
and a good way to really take a look at fasting is that in those areas where you fast, you are going to remove the distraction and you are going to then focus on your creator and being creative. You're going to say, at this time, I'm going to not participate in, for example, social media. Social media is a great way to fast nowadays because we find ourselves often scrolling on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok. And what happens is it distracts us when we can be using some of that time to focus on the creative nature of being a producer. So fasting would be taking some time away from food or social media, television, all of these areas can program us instead of us being the ones that are programming our own lives. That's why they call it television programming. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but it programs us in a particular way. And there are many things that are on these television shows and on the Netflix um, uh, movies or Hulu or whatever that program us in a particular way. We want to take that back by fasting and connecting with our creator so that we can be ones that are creating and that we will have the power that Jesus had when he came down off of that Mount of Transfiguration. So one way to help activate or exercise our faith on purpose is to fast. And I want you to start off small, just like the mustard seed, whatever it is, you don't have to start off a full day. You just want to commit to some amount of time that you're going to fast. And then what I want you to do is increase that amount of time that you're going to fast. Like, you know, fast for initially 30 minutes away from an item and then increase that every day. Make the 30 minutes an hour. And then from there, make that hour two hours. And continue to increase your fasting so that then you will become in a place where you are focused on your creativity. I cannot stress to you enough that once you begin as a producer, producing more items of what you were born to create and what you were born to do, you will feel greater peace in your life, greater love in your life, greater joy in your life, and you're going to have more space to do more creative things. You won't feel as if there are so many competing factors in your life that are honing in or taking your time. Our most precious and most valuable gift that God has given every one of us is our time. The next thing I want to talk to you about is that Once you understand that you are working your faith and you've been fasting, that exercising faith is is also important that we make sure that we are doing works that align with the faith that we are uh, looking at. So if I believe it's going to rain outside, what do I do to prepare for that rain? What are some works that I would do if I believe that it's going to rain. One of the areas that I know I would do is either get my raincoat or my umbrella to make sure that I don't get rained on. Um, This has happened many times where I used to go to school. Where I went to school, I used to have to walk many blocks to get to um, school in the college that I was at. And if I did not have my rain jacket and my umbrella and it was going to rain, I was going to get soaked. And I did get soaked a couple of times and had to go home and not even go to classes because I wasn't prepared for the rain. So if rain I'm expecting as a faith item that I would want in my life, then I'm going to prepare for it. And it's the same thing. If you have faith, that your life is going to get better, your relationships are going to get better, that you are going to be in a place where 
your health is going to be better, then you start to do things that prepare for that. And so faith becomes what we talk about. So if you are believing that your body's going to get better, you're going to start to exercise and eat a particular way so that because so that your faith, believing that, aligns with it. So your actions actually align with your belief and your imagination and what you're believing. I want you to do another thing, is that every night before you go to bed, whatever you're looking for as a producer to come to life, maybe it's a book, maybe it's going to be um, music that you're going to create, maybe for you, you just want to have a person in your life because you're single, there, whatever your item is, I want you to first imagine it and have faith in your creator to give you exactly what the vision is for you. You have to take time with this, but I want you to be able to really take a time to think about that because your faith with intention and purpose, you will see manifested in this world. That's what Jesus was talking about when he said, in Matthew 17, that when you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing would be impossible. Christ wants us to understand that we have the ability, and that's just about everything that happens in this world. I mentioned it on previous episodes is that everything that is in this world, it comes from your imagination and your faith. And that's why our faith in God and our faith in our creator becomes such a great asset for the producer. If you want to realize something in this world, and it's important that you exercise this on a consistent basis and that it is not just a one-time event and you're not just looking for a result, but that you are looking for a life that is changed and is different. I want you to know that when you put your works behind it and you begin to allow your alignment of what you believe is going to occur, that you are moving in that act with the actions in your life that align with that faith, then you understand that your faith will not be dead. In James, it talks about faith without works would be dead if you um, don't have the works behind it. I'm telling you that you would align by making sure that you were doing those things. Just like the what I talk about, if you expect rain, you're going to bring that umbrella. In Corinthians, it also talks to and tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. Meaning that our everyday walk is by faith. It is through that imagination, through your confidence in your creator, that these things that you cannot see are already real. They're not something that you are um, taking for granted that you're going to become stronger because you believe that in, in what is greater than your five senses. God gave us this imaginative power that I don't believe the rest of the animals have in this world. We have it as humans, and we are able to have the imagination, and that's why words can program us. That's why our words can change us. And that's why the faith that we have, if we speak the same faith, uh, and remember out of our heart, the mouth speaks, that means that you're speaking the things that are going to happen in this world for you and in in those around you. And you're not going to depend on your five senses, but you are focused in on believing in your creator. You must go back to your creator to get the instructions on what you should have faith in. There are so many promises that God provides us in the Bible that allow us to 
uh, really walk in a greater power and a greater strength to have greater joy and greater love for everyone that we see and all that we see that is in this world. And that's going to be extremely important for us to understand. So I'm going to encourage you to have that mountain moving faith by starting with some small commitments. I'm going to challenge you now. For the next 30 days, I want you to focus on a big problem in your life, whatever it is. I don't know what the big problem is, but whatever your big problem is, and I want you to, number one, make a small commitment to fast and to talk to your creator, invite him in, and begin to imagine what the end result is going to be of your problem being solved. How do you feel when this problem is completely solved? You're going to pray to God and you're going to meditate on this situation during uh, times of fasting, even during times that you're not. And I want you to then understand that the mountain that has been in front of you, the issue, the problem, that you will start to see solutions come into place. I want you to also take the time to commit to believing what scripture says. I want you to go to um, what you know to be real. For example, understand that your creator has plans for you. Jeremiah 29 and 11 tells us that, that he has plans for us. He has plans for us to prosper, that he will not leave us nor forsake us, as he says in Deuteronomy 31 and 6. So he's with you every step of the way. I want you to commit to doing that every day for the next 30 days. And I believe that you'll continue to do this further than the 30 days, but you've got to make that initial commitment, this to exercise your faith on purpose based on you. And and maybe you also want to see a growth in the gifting that you have. Um, I love the gifting uh, that I have for teaching, speaking. Uh, I can typically take something that is um, very hard to explain and, you know, make it in a place that it's explainable, something that um, I love to do and enjoy to do. Maybe you want to see a growth in your gifting. This is the time, and I want you to take the time, and I want you to apply that so that you can exercise your faith on purpose. And continue to pray. And the last thing I want you to do, and we've been doing this every episode, and I want you to continue to keep your journal, that you're going to write down the differences as you begin to see happen in your life, whether it's through the problems, through a greater gifting of you, that you're able to produce more of what your creator has wanted you to produce. I'm going to stop there for this episode. I am so excited about what he is about to do through you and uh, you taking your faith and exercising it on purpose. Every day for the next 30 days, I challenge you to go fast, pray, bring in and take away anything that is not Um, that's that's distracting you, and write it down. And I want you to review what you write down every every so often. I don't know how often you want to do it. If it's every day for you, that's fine. Or every week, I want you to review what has occurred, and you will see that your great works have moved you into a place that allows you to begin to produce even more on purpose. That concludes this episode of Produce on Purpose, Exercise Faith on Purpose. Next week, we are going into another great episode. This episode that we are going to move into is use influence to get results. I can't wait to see you next week on our next episode. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to subscribe 
to this podcast on whatever platform that you are on, subscribe and also leave a review. That's going to help provide feedback to make this podcast better and that it can be something that is useful for many others. You can reach me at www.randyadkinsjr.com. Provide me feedback of what you like about this episode, what you like about the podcast, and we'll continue to make it better. And I will see you on the next episode.